Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the live version of the uh, carnivore uh, diet vlog, basically. Day 120. That's right. We've reached four months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so welcome. Welcome, everybody. And I hope that your journey, journey is going well. Also, if it isn't, I need to hear from you. Let me know. Talk to me. Find out. Let's let's work on things. But guys, I really do hope and I have heard from some of you guys and it sounds like some of your journeys are going good as well. So it's been 30 days uh, since the last weigh in. And um, so we are making progress. That's right. Now, I oh, excuse me. I just had dinner not that long ago. So, <laughs> Russell, what's going on, buddy? I know. um your journey has been going decent, huh? Autumn, how you doing? It's good to see you guys popping in here. I guess we could probably give um, give a few minutes since I just got on here. We'll give everybody a few minutes to get on here. Um, yeah, I'm glad you made the live too. Um, before I start revealing some measurements and uh, the weigh in video and stuff, I will uh, we'll talk a little bit. Um, I'll just I'll just start talking about today. Today I. Um, I had a very like minor, really minor headache, like really minor. It was like those, um, it's like you almost don't want to call it a headache. It's just like a very slow in the background kind of pulse. So uh, I don't know, but I don't know if it's just maybe I didn't get enough nutrients last night, but I, I think it's more stress related than anything. I, I don't want to keep blaming diet for every single thing. You know, um, one somebody said in the comments uh, just just uh, today, they popped in there and they said, um, like when I was talking about the aches and pains after the, the day after I had like those pork rinds or whatever uh, and eating out. Um. Somebody did comment. They said, hey, you know, maybe it's some other things. It may not even be diet related. You know, I mean, it could just be poor rest. Maybe you slept wrong, you know, and I, I, I got to give them credit. You know, I can't always blame everything on straying from from like clean carnivore. Um, so I, I can't always. But, you know, I can't rule those things out. And consistently, I tend to get pretty good physical consistent results every day I, t I tend to feel consistently decent like solid every day so when i do change something up food wise my first suspect is of course going to be food <laughs> so um autumn are you saying that you had a dizzy spell today or was that or was you speculating on me but but no, I had a um, a mild sort of headache type today. It was very, like I said, very very subtle, and and, and it could have been even from lack of drinking water. I, I haven't drank a lot of water today, to be fair. So could have just been not drinking water, and you know, I mean, there's there's a few different things that could be speculation, right? So I, I'm not gonna like stress about it. Um, I didn't have red meat last night. I had chicken, as you guys saw. I had this big kind of chicken burger. <laughs> so, and I did like this sort of curry style and I did it again tonight. So I made, I made it again. I don't have a picture to show you guys tonight, but I tweaked the recipe and I made like a sour cream curry sauce. Um, it's sour cream based because in curry, they do use yogurt. Um, but I did more sour cream. I thought it'd be okay. And it, it was okay. I'm still not quite getting the recipe the way I picture it in my mind. So I probably am not going to try for a while. I'm going to go back to just red meat again for a while because this is the second night in a row of, of eating close to a pound of chicken. And chicken doesn't have a high fat content. So I had to use some butter. And I'll probably end up snacking on some bacon a little later. I had a meat stick and two hard-boiled eggs today earlier. So, um, but guys, I say we start digging into some stats and, uh, 
And and let's see what do you guys. I mean, how are you guys doing tonight? You guys doing all right out there? You guys, Russell, your journey still going well. Everybody's journey, I hope, is going well. I really do. Um, I feel like we are all kind of in this together. Whether some people are, uh, you know, ooh, you had a cheap potato. You had two steaks. That's good. Why would you do the cheap potato, Autumn? Ah. That's okay. I hey, look. I'm not gonna judge anybody, you know. I just gotta I gotta pick on you a little bit though, you know. I mean, come on. We gotta we gotta we gotta stick to it. Man, the two steaks, that'd been great for me. I would have loved the two steaks. Yeah. But no, seriously. Oh, you're 140 pounds. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, again. Remember, and this is something I want to point out, it's not about weight. It's about health, right? Because you want to try to stay as close to health. As so I think sometimes we can easily get into that comfort zone of, I have Crohn's disease. The carbs are okay for me, not you. <laughs> okay. You're going to pull the Crohn's disease card. All right. Uh, I'm cooking a burger right now. Nice. Nice. Good job. Are you making, uh, are you going to make my one pounder? <laughs> you like the, Russell, did you like that? Uh, I know you were saying that, you know, your ears were coming out kind of dry. So I tried to make that video and show you more of a, a juicy version that I do that has the egg. And I don't always do a splash of heavy cream, but that, that is an option if you need it to be a little more, you know, uh, juicy. I'm trying to avoid the. Well, I had a griddle for that one pounder. Well, I mean, you could still do it in, in a, a pan. I just I do it. I have that. Um, I have that flat uh, griddle. I mean, it was more like for my wife, but we just we put it on the back porch, and we just it just became a thing of instead of always frying up uh, burgers like every day in the house because it you know I mean nothing against burgers, but it can start making your house smell a certain way, and you know when you want your house to smell a different way than just meat, <laughs> having a grill on the back porch helps a lot. But if you don't have that oven bag, no cleanup. Yeah, I mean, you can do certainly those things. I don't like running the oven a whole lot just because of bills. And like, I just, I don't know. Oven just seems to 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 have to, you know, you got to preheat it and all this other stuff. But I mean, I guess, I guess the same as preheating a grill. So I don't know. <clears throat> oven bags, that can be good. But yeah, if you if you do have a pan though, and you want to try to make that uh, one pounder, like like I said, you'll find it's more because the way look the way I look at it is like if I can't afford to eat steak every day, I really can't. I would love to, like that would be great. Realistically, everything costs so much money. I went, what was it? What was the one example I was thinking of? Like it was just it was something ridiculous. It's like. Yeah, like I went to the gas station. I got two hot dogs, no buns, just the just the hot dogs, right? And they used to have more. You could get like the the really good quality gas station ones. The ones on the rollers would be like two for three bucks. Now there's another gas station that will serve you more of like the cheaper ones on a bun, and they're like two for a dollar. They used to be, but anyways, the two for three buck ones. Now you get those same two hot dogs and a cup of coffee that's like 20 ounces of coffee, just black coffee. Remember, like black coffee is the kind of stuff you go into a diner. You used to be able to go to like a diner or a restaurant and get a cup of, of coffee for super cheap because it's coffee, right? Two plain hot dogs, no buns, and one large cup of like 20 ounces of coffee was like seven and a half dollars. I mean, what the hell over? <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's that's shit. That's shit. You eat garlic and hot sauce. Those are vegetables too. I love these. I love spices. 
Well, yeah, and and you know the spice thing, it's it's sort of a debated thing, and and it can be dirty. That's that's the dirty part of carnivore for me. But there's there's some arguments to be made about raw vegetables, cooked vegetables, and vegetables in uh, spice form, and you know there's there's a lot of debate on that. So, can you afford an entire legament from a cow? Maybe some small farms. I buy and butcher most of my own meat. Um, I'm. I would like to get into that more. Um, I have a chest freezer. It's not real big. Um, it, it, it depends. There is some. I do live in a part of Tennessee that has a lot of uh, ranches. Uh, um, so, and there is some meat processing places that will. Uh, I think sell whole cows and stuff like that. I just haven't truly got into that myself yet. Cause again, usually you got to spend some upfront money, which I haven't had a lot of upfront money, you know, to spend on that. I mean, like I make good money for the most part, like I'm okay, but um, we just got a lot going on, you know, expense wise. And we're probably getting ready to move. Um <laughs> you can dry meat with salt so storing is it is easy to prep and say oh i know i know i'm just i'm bad about that like that part of things there there's definitely a lot i could even go even further but i feel like i feel like in a way i'm trying to so i kind of feel like a test subject okay if that makes sense i'm sort of subjecting myself to what I would call an everyday, not poor man, but just an average person, what would it be like to, if you're just an average working person, you really can't work out, you don't have a ton of money to spend on eating ribeye steaks every day, what would that, what could you do this diet? That's kind of how I look at what I'm doing. So if that makes sense, because technically, yes, I would love to invest the money in half a cow or a whole cow or whatever, because technically in the end, you would save money. You actually would save money. I get that. Like, I totally get that. But a lot of people don't always have that extra upfront income to, to just drop on that and, and then and then hope that the savings comes back in the long run, which it will, but people don't always have that upfront money. So I'm trying to look at what can you do as just a normal, average, everyday person? Could you do the carnivore diet? Could you do these things with just, just getting by on, on sort of minimal upfront costs? Um, so, so that's kind of what I look at is, is, that type of experimentation on me. Um, so uh, let me get into some some weigh-in stuff. And then, you know, some of you are in the hiding out. You haven't been chatting like Autumn or Russell, but that's okay. That's all right. No worries. Um, so let's look at. I'm going to bring up my weigh-in. How's that? Let's see what I've lost in thirty in thirty days, and then we'll look at the stats as well. So here we go. I'm going to bring this up. We'll hit play. Get my cursor out of the way. And there we go, guys. 268.1. So what does that mean? Well, let's bring over. Let's bring this over. This is just a little spreadsheet like on my office thing. So as you can see here, uh, we started out 30 days ago at the end of, of day 90, I weighed, I weighed in at 276.9. So I have now lost 8.8 .8 pounds more in 30 days without working out, just eating carnivore. And then you can see, let's look at my measurements, my neck. I did lose a quarter inch on my neck, uh, down to 18 inches. My chest measurement, which is right at the uh, nipple line, basically, that went, we lost an inch and a half, uh, and we're at 50, uh, 50 inches. 
And now my waist, which is like the largest part of me around my belly button area, my gut and, and love handles, we lost a total of two and a half inches off my waist. And my hips still seem to be measuring out at 46, which is, you know, because I have that fucking, you know, Dunlap over my belt, you know, gut hanging over my hips. I don't have an ass and my hips and legs, you know, I've always, I do a lot of walking and stuff in, in my, my jobs and everything. So my hips are the same. <laughs> so, um, but I'm glad to see two and a half inches off my, my midsection and another inch off my chest area, my man boobs and stuff. Uh, and a little bit off my neck. I'm not stressed about my neck, you know, um, but really happy to see that. So, um, what does that mean total wise? So total weight loss since I started carnivore is 47 pounds guys. As of four months, I'm down 47 pounds. So that's awesome. And, and I don't know what my original measurements were. Yes, I know. I kind of regret not taking them in the very beginning, but at least I took them at day 90 at least. Right. And now we can kind of measure the the uh, that progress so i did some math okay uh if you guys want to see what that looks like also by the way let me let's now i will apologize this here i had to wear my black shirt because my gray shirts i actually graduated to my collared um black shirts with my job <laughs> so i don't normally I, I no longer wear the gray ones um, so it's kind of cheating a little bit. It's, it's hard to kind of see, uh, I get that, but I just wanted to at least put up a photo, um, what I can, if I wear a gray shirt, I'll, I'll try to maybe wear the gray shirt for uh day one fifty, uh, if I can find the a gray one. Um, but, uh, but there's a photo there. I just thought I'd show you guys that. All right. There, I'll just kind of leave that up for a second. Um, so, yeah, 47 pounds. So to do some math, thank you, Sarah. Sarah popped in there. So 47 pounds after four months. The math, by the way, works out to about 2.9 pounds a week. So you might as well say I'm, I'm losing about three pounds a week, okay? Um, so that's not bad. I consider that a very safe and natural weight loss. Um, I think three pounds a week is is nice, right? I think two two to three pounds is good progression. I think three pounds is good. Um, I really wouldn't want to lose weight faster. I know a lot of people are like, I want to lose weight faster. But if you want good solid weight loss without it coming back, I think that's safe. So you figure three pounds a week. And so I'm at 268. Now, remember, when I weighed in, my one goal was like I wanted to get below that 285 threshold. And so we finished at the, the day 90, which was the um, – shoot, hold on. I got to look at my little um, – no, not that. Where's my little cheat sheet? Let me put this over here because, you know. But uh, – so when I when I got to that day 90, I was 276.9. So I kind of consider myself like 277. So I'm like, hey, I broke that 285. I I I beat that in 90 days. That was awesome. I, I was I was proud of myself. And my next 90 day goal by day 180, I wanted to be below 265. Well, we're at 268 today. So just so I'm already within three pounds of beating my next goal. So right now, so let, let's let's take a look at some realistic goals here. What part of Tennessee? I'm in Manchester. Uh, I'm in Northeast, like Bristol area. Like you know, if you if you know where the NASCAR Bristol Tennessee racetrack is and stuff. Uh, so I'm in the Northeast part of Tennessee. Um, so, okay. So, all right. So if we're losing roughly three pounds a week, then, and we got what, eight more weeks, that's 24 pounds, which means 
That would put me at uh what 44 244 my next goal then i think realistically let's look at 250 just in case you know we slow down a little bit or something or we hit a plateau or whatever but let's look at 250 i think 250 is a realistic goal by day 180 i think that's realistic and i have not been this low again every every time i keep losing weight it's you know, you guys saw I shared 11 years of weigh-in data with you 30 days ago. So you guys can go back and look and see where I was, you know, in my weight journeys. And you can see it's it's I'm, I'm going back in time, <laughs> losing weight. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm so excited, guys. Uh, Kim, hey, Kim. Also, this is glad I caught you, even though I'm like, oh, it's okay. No, no worries. No worries. Like I said, 47 pounds is what I lost. Um, two and a half inches off my waist, an inch off my chest. So we're getting there. A quarter inch off my neck. My fat neck. My fat neck. Like <laughs> Tuck in your chin. <laughs> Anyways. Um, God, I got to shave. My gray's coming in. Shit. I'm showing my age now. I'm trying to look younger. My crow's feet. I got to get rid of it now. Anyways. Um, yeah. So thank you. I appreciate it. Russell, 345 to 314 in the same time. Nice. Well, I love that, Russell. That's so cool. Is that what, so are you currently at 314, Russell? Is that what you're saying? Because that's like, uh, I mean, that's 31 pounds. I mean, that's still awesome. I mean, really. That's an amazing weight loss, Russell. So right now, I started my journey at 315, right? And you're now just starting to crack. And now you, so this guy right here, the the picture on the left of me, that's when I was 315, okay? So, so Russell, that is so cool because now you're starting to weigh less than my original, and you're going to get better and better and better. I love that so much. I love that. That is so cool. I, I mean, seriously, that is awesome to hear. And and like I said, I know quite a few of you guys. Uh, around 250 to, 10, to 176, two years. Is that oh, just of dieting and stuff? Well, that's awesome, though. I mean, look, I, I I don't knock. I don't know what kind of diet she does, and I, I don't like to knock other diets. I think all diets can work. Are they sustainable long term? That's up to the individual. Like, for me, I'm a yo-yo dieter, and I can't do calorie diets. I can't do carbs. I can't do sugar. I've learned that. And that's the only reason why for me, carnivore works for me because I, I just can't handle sugar and carbs. I I start making too many exceptions and it's it's just kind of like if you're an alcoholic and you're saying, well, uh, I'm an alcoholic, but I don't mind drinking a beer every once in a while. Like, I can't do that. You know what I mean? I can't have... Uh, dessert every once in a while. I can't have carbs. I can't be like, ah, I'm going to have me some homemade bread, you know, this one time because that one time is going to turn worse and worse for me. I, I can't do that. That's why a lot of those other diets don't work for me. You know, um, you know, I never even had my, I never even had my candle on in the background, guys. Sorry about that. I always have a little bit of extra something going on there even though the picture's in the way today but that's okay um i'm on day 82 29 pounds see that's that's good progression that's similar progression and that's good and that's what we're talking about so i've been averaging 2.9 pounds a week since i started is the average remember i lost 11 right off the bat <laughs> but the average is about 2.9 pounds per week i'm just i've been saying 3 just as rounding, rounding. Um, I stopped keto out of fear of Novocaine not working at the dentist. Ended up at my highest ever weight. I ate 
croissant, pizza, and donuts. Yeah, I mean, again, I think everybody, everybody who, a lot of people that are drawn to my channel and other channels and into dieting in general, we have problems, man. Like, we have problems. Your posture looks better in the third picture. Yeah, I mean, I've been working on, and, and this is something I talked about before, is when you lose weight, your your center of gravity is going to shift because the more belly, the more front end you're loaded, right, the more weight on the front of you, the more your center of balance, you start having to kind of lean back to compensate in a way because your back and your posture. So it does affect your body physically. So as you lose weight, your center of gravity starts shifting and your posture is going to shift and, and also get a little better. Um, she also had cancer, did surgery, was told she had uh, six months. I switched her diet. She now does amazing carnivore heels. Uh, she's a chain smoker, refuses to give up the cigs, but she walks, eats meat and juice. That's nice. No, I mean, you know, I was a smoker for 20 years. Like I get it. You know, I, I used to tell myself, man, I'm never, ah, uh, I'm never quitting. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm never quitting. I'm, I'm never quitting. I'm going to smoke, you know, fucking pack a day, you know, whatever. I'm never going to quit. Um, mm -hmm. oh, I loved it. I love smoking, man. It was awesome. And it, it kept me thin. <laughs> it kept me thinner. I get it, but you know, I mean, I, I chose to quit because I got to a health thing, like you know, 2011, I think it was, and I just couldn't. I was just like wheezing all the time, smoker's cough, and I just was like, I'm done. I'm done. I give up, and I just cold turkeyed it, and I've been cigarette free now for since 2011. So, and that's great. But I'm glad to see anytime people do. Uh, carnivore or things like that. And, and there's so many amazing stories out there. Um, so many amazing stories, but yeah, I mean, just getting back to like the posture stuff, you know, the posture is really important uh, because that also leads to future health problems. And I noticed the way I walk, you know, I was starting to waddle a lot more. And some of you guys, some of you bigger, bigger people, you know what I'm talking about? You start getting into that fat guy waddle, <laughs> you know, uh, and you just got to stop yourself sometimes. And you know, I have to like kind of open my hips back up and start strutting again, you know, instead of the waddle. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy. Um, I never thought like if, if you guys listened to me in the beginning of this, some of you may have been there since day one, but, or maybe you've watched all my videos, but in the beginning I, I was, I mean, it's, I loved food and you guys, you'll, you'll hear me talk about it. I loved food so much. It was such a huge part of my life because it was, it was when you live with depression, right? There's only certain things in your life. And when you only have certain things that make you happy, your life is limited, right? So for me, I was in this perpetual depression brought on by my weight and other things, but weight was a big factor. And then I would eat to feel better and, you know, the cycle, right? So, Hey, Gerald, good to see you. Good to see you, buddy. I was just, we've been talking and I shared some of my stats. I'm down 47 pounds, two and a half inches off my waist, inch off my chest. Um, but yeah, depression guys, it's real. And then for me, food was a major part of my life because that's what gave me happiness. That's one of the few things I felt like I could control in my life that brought me happiness. Right. So it's like I could make food. It would make me feel good. It would give me the, those endorphins and it would just, you know, and, and then made my family happy. And, but I didn't, I didn't care about the toxicity part. And then of course, you know, but now I would have never thought over four months ago I would be capable of not worshiping food the way I used to, especially me, because I saw so many people over the years, every yo-yo diet, every diet that I did over the years, it's like 
I just kept seeing other people and I'm like, well, they're, they must be built different than me because I can't seem to, to, to stick with something like that. I can't seem to, to have their, their mentality, but carnivore has given me that that's, that's something I can finally say, like, I now have a tool and now I've done this four months now. And it's like, I now know how to feel good and feel good about myself and not have all those aches and pains and bloating this and all that other crap. It's like, I finally have that tool in my toolbox. I need some coffee. Oh yeah. Uh, food affects my mood so much. I probably would have had a bad attitude at my interview today if I didn't eat a pound of shrimp. <laughs> yeah. And it does me as well. Oh, yeah. Since we're live, you know, since we're just kind of BSing, and this is not my normal video. Guys, this is my J. Crow's uh, 2%, you know, iodine drops. This is the one that, it's the exact one that, uh, you know, Dr. Ken Berry uses and stuff and everything. But, anyways, this is what I do in my coffee. Now, I haven't done it yet, but I go one, two, three. Now, some people are going to say, Jux, it's not enough iodine. Well, too bad. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I listened to Dr. Brownstein and, and Ken Berry talk, and, you know, three drops seems to be okay. But I, I'm, I'm trying to break myself in. I might increase the drops later. Um, there is a slight difference. Have I noticed a difference? Um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I, I've, I haven't consistently did iodine every day um, for reasons. Like I did it for a week and then I like laid off a little bit, did it for another week. Now I'm back on it. Um, and I, I don't, I, I don't seem to notice a difference, but at the same time, Maybe, you know, it's not, maybe it's not necessarily something you're going to feel the difference, but maybe it's something that you're preventing from happening, right? So I got the tablet form of iodine plus selenium. I also do D3 supplements and vitamin C for those oxalates and dumping. I think they cause dark circles under my eyes. Uh, did you just get regular vitamin C, Russell? Because if you did, stop taking it and get get you liposomal vitamin C, okay? Uh, the regular vitamin C is going to really waste your time um, because it's more of a gimmick. Okay, you, so you got the liposomal. All right, good. Uh, so I wanted to make sure because a lot of people, they get the vitamin C. Like, well, I'm taking vitamin C. And, uh, oh, you said you'll look into it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, if you don't have liposomal vitamin C, get it because that's what's going to absorb into your skin uh, or into your stomach. Um, regular vitamin C, again, it's, you, you're just not going to absorb enough to make any difference. Um, I already looked into that. I had a doctor friend talk talk to me about it, and, and he was like, yeah, get the liposomal vitamin C. And that's what I got when when I was fighting the CVID. You know, I don't want to say it. I, always, I don't like saying it anymore because, you know, you, you get – demonetized not that i'm monetized but you get in trouble nowadays when you just say certain words it's so so lame freedom of speech but when i was doing cvid um zinc and liposomal vitamin c was a lifesaver um and uh because i was getting ready to load up on regular vitamin c and my doc friend was like dude no don't don't do that like get liposomal. So I ordered off Amazon because you can't, you can't find it. You can't just go to Walmart and find liposomal vitamin C half the time. I mean, you probably could go to like a, maybe a, like a GNC. Do they still have GNC stores around? I, I don't know, but I just ordered off Amazon. It was a lot easier than trying to drive around town and track it down or something. But if you can triggered world, that's true. We live in a triggered world. We live in a triggered world. God forbid you say anything, you know, off key or something. I mean, God dang. Um, but I think I think most people, um, well, 
mine, the liposomal vitamin C I got were, was pill. Excuse me, pill form. It was like the maximum milligrams. I can't remember what it was, but they were awesome. I'd take two of those a couple times a day when I was sick. <laughs> like they, they're awesome. But, but, um, but I don't take them on a regular basis. I honestly like. I get when you're when you vlog every day, you get a lot of advice from from everybody, and you. I I, I listen to some people and I and I try some things and I see how it is. And then some people are like, dude, stop taking supplements. And then I got some people like, man, make sure you take your supplements. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I can't win. Um, but I will say that I've been taking supplements off and on. I don't notice a huge difference. Um, and there's two camps or there's two mindsets that I have when it comes to supplements. I'm, I'm going to just voice my opinion again. One is, I the one camp is, if you're eating a proper human diet, you know, back in the day, they didn't take supplements, right? They ate animals, nose to tail, ate animals, this and that. On the other hand, the other mindset is, we live in a modern era where I'm not eating nose to tail all the time. I'm trying to eat all that stuff, but I don't always know what the animal's diet was. Was it a healthy diet? A lot of cows are fed out in the pasture and stuff. They're not always just grain fed. But again, I don't know the true diet. I don't know, you know, fully if I'm getting those things and I can't afford to keep testing myself all the time. So for me, I'm kind of in both camps of like, I feel like if I get away from red meat, like the last few days I've had chicken, right? And chicken's not very, you know, it's not going to substitute red meat. So I'm, so I took supplements tonight. I took some zinc, some magnesium, some potassium, um, pretty much like my own element, like that brand element I'm not sponsored by. I don't take it. Fat is amazing. Exactly. I had beef hot dogs for dinner due to watching your videos. I didn't do the ground beef on top. Oh, you like the chili? Yeah. I mean, um, I don't always do the chili. Obviously, that was like, I just was like in the mood for like a chili dog. You know, I mean, you know, 51 days carnivore, no supplements at all. Am I missing something? No, I mean, it. Again, I I don't take a lot of supplements myself, and and um, the only time I I really start taking them is if I if I have a night where I eat say like a five egg omelet with a little bit of meat and bacon and stuff. I, I like so if my meat if my meat intake is lower and I'm relying more on eggs or chicken or something as a filler then I'll take supplements just to make sure that I'm getting those extra few um, nutrients. But if I'm eating like a, my one pound burgers or a steak or something, yeah, I'm not going to take any supplements. So that's just how I look at it. But um, the iodine, I just been taking just because I know that I'm not using iodized salt and I don't want to take a chance. I mean, I'm in Tennessee. I don't know how the 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 the, the products we that I buy, obviously some of the stuff's going to be shipped in. I don't know what's all going to contain iodine you know part of me wonders you know back in the day as we all talk about it and all the doctors all the carnivore doctors talk about it like what did they do for iodine was it just because did they get everything they need in animals and and whatnot or is there some other form of iodine that i'm missing out on and that's why i have to take these drops i don't know but i'm just taking the drops just to make sure Oh, you made my one pound burger. Oh, it was fantastic. Thank you. I, I was wondering if somebody was going to enjoy what I like. <laughs> just I make it the way I like it. <laughs> I'm making pickled eggs while watching while watching eggs are amazing. They have all the essential nutrients. You could live off hard boiled eggs. It would be gross but possible. I don't know. I mean, could you live off eggs? I, I mean, does it literally have every single thing versus red meat? I don't know. Maybe I'll take your word for it. How's that? 
I'm not going to eat, eat live off of eggs. Um, I like I think doing both is fine. I like doing two hard boiled eggs and then meat at night, like uh, one pound of beef. I try to stick around one pound. That's been I can I can pretty much eat one pound now or just short of it. Um, and if I get if I'm still if I if I finish the one pound, I still feel like I'm not like if, if my body's saying, hey, I can still eat a little more, I'll usually break out some bacon. Um I I, I haven't been just and, and I've been throwing that one egg in my meat mixture every day just to make sure that I have those nutrients as well. I use eggs to get my fat in. I mix a third cup tallow with six eggs. Okay. Yeah, I, I have a ton of bacon grease now. I use bacon grease to cook with a lot. Um, I haven't been eating a lot as, of, of much butter as I did when I first started out with carnivore. I've definitely reduced a lot of cheese. Like, you guys don't see me do a lot of my carnivore pizza stuff or anything with cheese sauces that much anymore. I, I just, you don't even see me doing fettuccine, like the Alfredo sauce. Um, the Alfredo sauce is a big one that it's carnivore. I just haven't been doing a lot of it. Mostly lately, for for whatever reason, my diet, I've just gotten, I've just kind of gotten used to eating like just a, a pound burger every day just about it now these last two days have been one pound chicken burgers <laughs> um trying to do like the curry thing and i did talk about it earlier in the beginning of the video but i made a second uh curry chicken burger uh tonight and that was interesting <laughs> uh, uh you guys can't see my you guys can't even see those stats right now even if you wanted to uh I don't even know if I could. Well, anyways, that's that's some of my stats right there. Here, maybe that. I don't know. But that's like my chapter two stats. This is why it was 30, 30 days ago. And then the second ones are, let me just go to this view. Yeah, and then you can see my second, the second set is my day 120. Kathy, hi. So uh, total 8.8 .8 pounds loss in the last 30 days, uh, two and a half inches off my uh, waist. And an inch and a half off my chest. Does the chicken keep you satiated like beef? I finally get hungry again sooner when I eat chicken. Uh, absolutely. You're right. <laughs> that's why I'm going back to beef tomorrow. <laughs> um, that's why I, normally, okay, so normally if I would have had my one pound burger last night, beef burger, then today I probably would just had the, the two hard boiled eggs and that's it. But I actually found myself getting a big meat stick. Also, like I had one egg at 12, one egg at two, and then I wanted a beef stick even after that. So I, it, you know, that's the thing. And then I had chicken again tonight with that sour cream. I tried to make like a sour cream curry sauce, but it's like I was trying to go for that kind of curry flavored chicken burger. And I just didn't quite get the way I wanted it. I think the recipe was better tonight. But it's not something I'm going to share because I, I don't want you guys to like. I didn't even like share my ch that chili recipe with you guys because, in my opinion, it wasn't that good. I am working on a better chili recipe so that way, if you want like a carnivore chili to go over top of your hot dogs, beef takes longer to digest the eggs, so you don't uh, you do not to eat more often if you're not eating red meat. I mean, I'm gonna. Eat red meat. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm gonna eat red meat every day that I can. But my normal routine has been like one pound burgers lately. Uh, let's go back to this. Oh, uh, we go. We'll just go back to here, I guess. Um. <clears throat> Here, we'll go back to that right now. And, and like I said, this right here was 
Um, I, again, I didn't really want to wear the black shirt, but I just couldn't find the gray shirt. And now I've, I'm slim enough to, to fit back into my collared black shirts. So that's why I'm wearing that, by the way. I love carnivore for never having to run to the bathroom anymore unless I have something with fiber in it. Yeah, I mean, I I tend to just go to the bathroom about every other day, half the time. And But no, I will say I, I half disagree with you on this because I get what you're saying. But also, when I have to go finally... I have to go usually like it's not I'm like I'm not going to poop myself. I'm just saying like I like typically it's like, oh, I got to go pot. I got to I got to go to the bathroom. So I'm going to go. But other than that, I don't have to go near as often or, you know, I mean, it's it's not too bad. Um, You're going to do it with ground bison. Nice. Nice. Isn't bison more leaner, though? Isn't that like a isn't that a lean? I see. I see ground bison. But I think, isn't it? Isn't that more lean? I like using 80 20, but I probably should start getting the 73 27. They've been having some pretty good specials on it. Are you adding fat? Um, I don't know. Autumn, I might I might try the ground bison. I might try it one of these one of these nights. You know, maybe I'll try it soon. Maybe tomorrow. I don't know. I try to make videos for you guys and, and do some things every once in a while and show you guys. Um, oh, you had duck fat. Nice. I'm just calling you Autumn Teapot. I'm just calling you Autumn. I don't even know if that's your name, but <laughs> just calling you Autumn. Uh, but um, lean meats, I have fat. Yeah, I mean, I usually try to as well. I usually add a little bit anyways, even if it's like 80, 20, I still will cook with bacon grease. And like you guys saw my burger, I smear that layer of bacon grease on the one side, let it sear on the bottom and I flip it over and let that, you know, sear up. And then I put butter on the top and let that soak in. I mean, Eli, if you want a name. Okay. I try to remember that, you know, I just, a lot of times I see your guys' screen names, so I just shorten them up, but. Uh, I can't get ground chuck in 7327. Unfortunately, ground chuck from industrial farms tend not to have or tend not to have bone chips because they fear liability and the gristle is soft, huh? Well, I'm kind of stuck using the stores. I don't, I probably don't have to, but um, there's a lot of stuff like Walmart and and like I don't just go to Walmart for everything, believe it or not. There's actually a local. A fairly, if, if you guys ever watched, if anybody has ever watched like NASCAR or have heard of NASCAR, like the Bristol race, I live near the Bristol racetrack and the Food City, like they, they had a race, the Food City 500, uh, Food City pretty much like the guy that owns Food City, like owns the track, like Food City is a chain of local supermarkets around here. Um, they're slightly more expensive than Walmart, but they give you, if you have the Food City card, you actually get a big discount on gas. And so you do save money and, you know, in the end, and you, you get a discount on the groceries and it, it does work out. But what's nice about Food City is they actually do have a butcher. It's not a full service butcher, but they will work with you on some things and and they have a... Um, like I pick out my my steaks and I've learned how to pick out. So instead of like the prime top sirloin, for example, that's $8.99 a pound, they have regular top sirloin, which is $7.99 a pound. And if you if you pay attention to the marbling, there's some good marbling in the regular top sirloin that probably almost could make the prime cuts. It's just that for whatever reason, somebody chose not to to, to do them. So if you pay attention to the steaks and the top sirloin, you can save yourself a few bucks by looking at the marbling and, and making sure that you insist on, like most of the butchers are really good. Like if I tell them, hey, I need three um, three of these top sirloins, they'll ask me which ones. 
But if they just start grabbing up and say, no, excuse me, this one right here and this one right here, you know, like I'll point and I make sure I get the ones that I want because again, they got the marbling. Live on a pig farm in the woods. I got some connections, luckily. Do you guys uh, slaughter the pigs and, and eat them and all that stuff? Mm. Oh, and by the way, putting iodine, like the three drops of iodine in my coffee, I... If you were to do a blind taste test, I I probably wouldn't notice, but at the same time, I I have kind of gone where when I don't do it, I taste it. When I do do it, or when I when I when I do the drops, I do think I can taste it slightly. That's just me. But it don't bother me. It's like it's not like a bad thing. Mm. It's been fun hanging out with you guys. I mean, I got to get going here soon. Um, I don't as I eat beef and eggs more. Well, I grew up I grew up near a pig farm, and I got to tell you, like, look, I'm a country boy. All right, now, do I sound like – most people, when they think, oh, you're a country boy, they, 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 they immediately – I hear like a southern accent, and they're like, hey, man, you country boy? Hell yeah, I grew up on the country. I love love me some country music. No, I'm not from the south. However, I have lived in the south more than the north. I grew up in Michigan, but I did grow up out in the country. I grew up riding my BMX bike miles upon miles upon miles every day as a kid. Somehow we were allowed to back in those days, right? Uh, I grew up in that generation. If anybody remembers the 70s and, <laughs> and, and early 80s and stuff, I grew up back then. And we could ride our bikes everywhere. And I would go to all the farms around me, pig farms, dairy farms, all that stuff. I would ride the hay wagons. I'd bale hay. I had farmer strength, man. And I, didn't even, I wasn't directly on a farm, but I grew up all near them. And I helped out. So I had that farmer strength, man. Even, you know, that's where some of my my muscle mass still to this day is all stemmed from. Um, but in any case, my point is, is that uh, going all the way back to what I was talking about with the pigs, it's like that was the one thing, like out of all the stuff, like I understand how life works. I'm not I'm not going to sit there and cry and be. I'd be like a, a a soy boy and be like, oh, the animals don't hurt the animals. Ooh, ooh. No, I mean I get it. Like, you know, the cows and and pigs and and sheep and all that stuff. You know, they they serve their purpose, right? That's the that's the the the, the cycle, the life cycle. I mean, you know, um, we're going to kill animals um, regardless, and a lot of times, you know, the the nature mother nature is a is better for it believe it or not it's when we avoid and we start becoming vegans and we start messing with the 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 natural order and we start using all these a ton of pesticides and all this crap on on vegetable farming and all this other crap and killing a, a ton of small animals in the process that's not natural sorry but but what i'm saying is out of everything when a pig would get slaughtered, it was the worst. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, that was always the worst for me as a kid because they they there was a there was just the sounds were horrible. That's all I'm saying. Um I'm old and grew up in northern Wisconsin. I know that life. Yeah, exactly. You know, and you know, I try not to look as old as I am. I'm not, I don't like to really disclose my age, but I, I mean, I got four grandkids now, you know I mean? And like I said, this, I've got gray. It's just, I was blessed with not losing a bunch of hair, um, you know, as far as like color and, and gray in my hair, my, my real father had jet black hair and um, my mother had the blonde. So I have this like sandy blonde hair. My dad had the brown eyes. I've got, I picked up the blue eyes, as you guys can tell, I'm sure. 
So I got that stuff from my mom. I got my body shape and frame from my real father. Like I looked like him at his age back then. Um, and even like in my third, like, you know, when, he, when they looked at some of the, the pictures, um, you look 52, that's a compliment if you have, I guess so, um, but, uh, I, I'm proud. I'm proud of, I'm proud of my, um, the, the, the era I grew up in. I feel like I was in that last generation of, of, uh, good manners and, um, not to say that, that there's not good millennials and good Gen Z people out there and, and all the stuff there is, there's, there's good among all the generations there is. And I'm not going to talk shit about different generations. Um, I've also had pigs and cows on my small acre years ago, loved it, but moved into our small town down the road. I understand all you're talking about. Yes. Autumn or, Eli, the squealing. <laughs> There's nothing like um, hearing the sound of uh, pig squealing when they when they're getting slaughtered. It's it's crazy. Um, but I mean, again, I love bacon. <laughs> so let's put it in perspective, man. <laughs> Manners have definitely been lost in mass. Yeah, I mean, now that you guys know, look, now that you know, I've got to like. 10 more minutes, we can all bullshit. Uh, now that you guys have seen, I've lost 47 pounds, day 120, two and a half inches off my waist since in the last 30 days. Okay, that's not total. That's just in the last 30 days. Two and a half, 47 pounds has been since the beginning. I lost 8.8 .8 pounds. Uh, so I'm averaging 2.9 pounds a week. So about three pounds a week is what I'm averaging weight loss. So 47 pounds total. Pork belly, so delicious. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So many cuts of meat. But now, uh, this is your chance, the last 10 minutes. If you guys want to ask me any other questions on any subjects, I'm pretty much an open book. Um, maybe not a lot of politics, maybe. Maybe we should probably avoid some politics. Um, I don't know. Whatever you guys want to ask, feel free. What is your goal with carnivore? Do you have a target weight? Yes. Okay. So, my goal, so short-term goal, this for for what I call chapter two, which is the next set of 90 days. So right now we're in that that first third, right? Day 120 of day 180. Um, I wanted to get down to 265. Well, obviously I'm at 268. So I think we're gonna hit that. I don't I don't want to jinx myself, but I think day 180, I would like to hit 250. Okay. Now, long term, long term goal, like something like later by the end of this year, like after one year, I, I, I haven't been below two hundred pounds in decades, like fucking decades. I mean, would it be would it be nice to get there? Can I get there? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to put a specific target weight, but when I was when I was in the military and I got out of basic training, I was for I was five foot six. I was down to one fifty nine. I remember because I got home and everybody's like, "Dude, you like really like." Cause I was always bulky, like, like as far as muscular and stuff like that. And I wasn't fat going into the military, but when I got home, they're just like, dude, you're like trim, man. You're like stack. And I got not stacked, like beefy, but you know what I mean? So I, um, when I got on the scale, it was like 159. I remember I was like, holy shit. Um, but then, you know, I kind of like stabilized out for the longest time, like in the one seventies, um, and when you look up for ideal weight for five, six, I want to say it's like 165 to 170 something, depending on your age, right? You know, if I could ever get down within range to break 200, I would be amazing because I looked pretty good even around two, 
219, like 220, 210. Like I, I, I handled it. I carried it pretty well with my stocky frame, my muscles and everything. But, you know, 200 would be a dream. Like I'd be like, holy shit. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to take it sort of each segment, right? So by day 180, I'd like to lose 250. Now that I know we're this close to 265 already, I was like, holy shit. Because remember, 265 was another benchmark for me. So let's see. Is there any other questions? I'm in here. Eunice, hi. Didn't see you sneak in there. I'm glad I looked. <laughs> Eunice, always a big supporter. Been there for a long time. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Oh, by the way, did you guys see? Did you guys see? Like, I'm over 800 subs now. Holy crap. God dang, man. You guys are awesome. Like, I didn't even, I never would have thought my vlog, my, my little vlog, just, I just wanted somewhere to honestly hold myself accountable. That's really, that's why I started doing the vlog. It was like, I wanted to go. And because I, you know, I do do YouTube and, and, my my show and all that stuff you know you guys know I, I shared with you guys last time about some of the stuff i do with uh paranormal and in the tv show i have and all that stuff so like but for me this wasn't it, it wasn't like a social media venture for me it was like i'm so used to sort of being in front of a camera that i wanted to have myself accountable in front of a camera. So that's why I started this channel really to, to start holding myself accountable. And then when I started this journey, I'm like, here we go. I'm going to do day one. I'm going to do every day until people get sick of me, but I'm just going to vlog and just put it out there. And cause I always felt like if there was just one person that could watch my videos and they could see every single day what I ate, how I felt, and maybe that would help them. Maybe that would help them because if I could do it, because I used to hate that. I, God, you guys know how it feels when people would be like, well, if I can do it, you can do it. I hate that because I always fucking hated those people because I always thought that they had something I, I didn't. Unfortunately, I finally found a, a diet, a lifestyle, if you will, not even a diet. I found a lifestyle that does work for me. And I can say, now I can say, if it works for me, it can work for you. <laughs> I hate saying that, but it's true now. Uh, yeah, I hate that, especially with people who didn't struggle with carb addiction. If I can do it. And that's the thing. Like, I would see some dude who he would kind of look like, like my picture on the left here. Like my picture on the left here, he would kind of look like that. And he'd be like, hey, I found this workout, you know, whatever fucking diamond yoga, whatever the shit there was back then, that they would find some workout and they would find some diet plan and, and they would do all they did was start doing this. I just started eating bananas and, and strawberries and shit. And they would work out and all this other crap. And like every time I would try those things, man, it's like nothing would would fully click. It'd just be like, what am I missing? And I would lose weight. I shared that with you guys, 11 years of data. I'd lose weight. Every diet works out there if you stick to it pretty much. But trying to stick to it, that's the problem. And they would be on there. And I just kept thinking that they had something in their mind that they were just built different than me. And I'm like, well, good for them. They're built different than me. It doesn't work for me. And I kept failing. And now, now I have something that it works for me. It may not work for everybody. There's probably somebody out there that's going to be like, I tried carnivore and it doesn't work for me. But there's so many stories of how it's helped people. If, if you do carnivore the right way, and you don't have fucking potatoes with your steak, <clears throat> like some people. <laughs> Just picking. But if you do carnivore, if you do it the right way, it's going to eventually work for you. Now, is it going to be sustainable? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I try to do a little bit of tomato sauce recently, a little bit of keto. I, you know, um, Mike and butter. 
I'm going to start a, a pizza with M&M topping diet. See how it goes. Oh, it's like, was you going to call it like the Bill Gates pizza? <laughs> pizza gate? <laughs> Throwing shade. I know I have to. Guys, you you know I have to pick on you guys because that's the, the tough love we need for each other. You know, I'm not one of those fucking channels, man, that, you know, is going to sit there and dance around. You guys know me. I'm straightforward. I'm a real true, honest person with you guys. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm going to say what I think. I'm going to cuss from a time to time on my lives because <laughs> that's who I am. I'm ex-military, man. We didn't, didn't, we didn't slice our head open on the bottom of an, of an aircraft and say, oh, poopy. Okay. We had some words coming out my mouth. All right. And I still do, unfortunately. Um, but I, I do. I love you guys. I really do. You guys have meant so much to me. Every single one of you. I mean, when I hear uh, comments from Eunice and Russell and, and Autumn, all you guys, everybody that, that comments on a regular basis, sometimes not always regular. Sometimes every once in a while you'll pop in there. Sometimes you'll disappear for a while. It don't matter. I love hearing your guys' stories, your support. It's meant a lot to me. It really has. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you. Like, I don't know. If I didn't do this vlog, I don't know if I would be here. And I don't mean that like, like, no, I don't mean like that. I meant as in a carnivore. Because I think there were some very weak moments that I was I was very close to giving up, but knowing your guys' struggles, knowing your comments, knowing the support, it's got me through some of those weakest moments, and I thank you guys, genuinely. I mean, seriously, that's, I mean, that's just from the bottom of my heart. Um. Congrats on your progress here. Keep me on track. Well, and that and that that helps too. Kathy, you know, I made that video for you the other night. <laughs> so I sometimes when you guys say, hey man, like how did you do this or how did you make this or you know, will you lose weight? And when you have those questions, like I, I don't mind making you guys specific videos for you guys sometimes, like because sometimes I think that that matters you know what i mean like because sometimes i hear you guys say like hey man it's I, i'm not really losing a lot of weight you know or, or blah 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 so I, that's sometimes why i want to get on there and make videos for you guys specifically sometimes because i know if it's one of you that's saying hey i'm discouraged because i'm not losing weight like you or i'm discouraged right now there's probably 30 or 40 other people just like you that just hasn't said anything so that's why if I if I hear certain things like that, that's why I like to get on here and make a video covering that topic because and I try to express it in a very real way. Um, nice. See, Mike and Butter, 36 days on carnivore, lost 20 pounds, 183, 163. Nice. And and again, it's also about the health. And that's something that's it's hard to it's easy to show numbers with, with weight, right? Because we're all like proud of that. Like when we have the weight loss, it's a it's a hard number. But it's hard for people to say, hey, I lowered my cholesterol. Or, well, in this case, cholesterol is not a thing. Um, but, hey, I improved my health, you know. Um, hey, I got rid of my pre-diabetes and stuff. I mean, those things matter. Um, and we should celebrate those things as well. Uh my carnivore diet is going better, by the way. <laughs> I never answered you. <laughs> yes, I'm glad. My hair isn't falling out anymore. That's awesome. See, I mean, there's so many little things that it's not always as tangible as like the weight numbers. Because I tell people all the time, it's like, even like, like Mike and Butter said, he's down to 163, right? 163, I don't know how high or tall he is, whatever, but 163 I mean, if you're, if you know, even for me, like five foot six, like that would look really good on me. So, but at the same time, 163, you want to be 163 pounds and healthy, not 163 pounds 
but then still have a lot of medical problems. And I think that's one of the biggest things that carnivore helps us is our medical issues as well. It's not just about the, the numbers of the diet. So, uh, Kim, you said that you also watched uh, me and Rick Van Man, right? It's It sucks that he doesn't um, – he's not doing his daily carnivore journey anymore, I, I will say. I don't know if Rick's going to watch this whole video or not. He'll, he'll probably watch a little bit and, and, you know, say something maybe tomorrow. He's on that England time. Um, but – I will say that. Did you like the? Did you see the one where I snuck into his studio? Did you guys? Did you guys see that video where I snuck into Rick's studio? What'd you guys think of that? <laughs> no more body odor. No more inflammation. No more GERD. No more back pain. No more meds. No more insulin resistance. The list goes on. Yes, I love that, Scott. Yes, Scott. Scott. Scott's been there a long time. Scott's given me a lot of tips and advice. Like he's, he's one of those person he's one of those people that's loaded with information. So if you need advice, you can hit up Scott too. <laughs> uh, yeah. As A1C went from 8.5 to 5.9 in 90 days. Yeah. I mean, and lost some weight, 25 pounds. I like your one pound burger. Have you ever tried making a meatloaf on carnivore? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I'm making half the time. It's almost like a meatloaf. I've done like, um, you can do a little more of a meatloaf style. Like instead of breadcrumbs, you can use pork rind crumbs and you can do a splash of heavy cream, an egg, of course, seasonings, mix it up like a meatloaf. And if you really want to do keto, you could just do some tomatoes instead of ketchup or you can do the carnivore ketchup if you wanted. But I, I if I, I just make it into a burger and that's pretty much what they are. They're like big meatloaf burgers, really, if you think about it. So, yeah, the uh, the the studio thing with Rick. Do you love that one? Yeah, I just was trying to show you guys a little bit of, like I said, you guys don't always get to see me beyond my studio stuff here. So I just thought I'd do something a, a little bit with, you know, I have green screens. I'm in filming and stuff. And it's not perfect. You know, obviously I, I had to do all that in a 24-hour turnaround. So doing special effects and, uh, and, and making it fun. And I wanted to really find a way to, to really make it look plausible like you know i wanted it to be like rick you know he left his because if you notice when he came back upstairs he showed that he had a camera up there on a tripod so i tried to make it look like that might have been the camera i used and and snuck in there and of course you can see the fireplace is going i i had to, to find a, a portion of his video i could use with his new studio and um and then through some sound effects and making it look like he left the room and you could hear him go downstairs. You hear him talking downstairs while I sneak in there. It was, it was all fun. It was, it was really fun to put together. And I, and by the way, guys, Rick didn't know I was doing this. <laughs> so a little behind the scenes. Um, I, I, um, all I did is I messaged him, you know, uh, I messaged him and was like, Hey buddy, uh, let, giving you a heads up. I got something special planned. You're going to want to see What was it? Day one 11. Wasn't that the thing? I think I mentioned, I think I told him, I was like, Hey, you're, you're not going to want to miss day one 11. It's kind of a surprise. <laughs> and he was like, okay, now I'm intrigued. He's like, I'll have to keep an eye out for it. So of course it went over well with, with him. And, and then he ended up like shouting out the video on his channel and stuff, which, which was great. I, I didn't expect him to, but I, uh, I just wanted to do something fun. I thought it'd be neat. I know both a lot of people had come over from Rick's channel as well. He had sent a lot of people my way at one time. So I just thought it'd be a fun crossover and, and kind of mess with him uh, since he's since he was doing that new studio. And I don't know. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it looked good. Rick got a chuckle. So yeah, exactly. Scott says, I'm waiting for your secret taco seasoning recipe like the girl. <laughs> yeah, I, um, Scott, I'm afraid that there was a couple ingredients that weren't exactly carnivore. One of them was my secret ingredient. That kind of sucks. It's not exactly carnivore. So I kind of had the, I'm not going back to the drawing board, but I'm going to work out a new taco recipe that's going to be, you know, really good. 
Um, and it'll be something, you know, carnivore safe. Of course, dirty carnivore, not purist. <laughs> right? Uh, guys, I just got a few more minutes that I can stay on here and then I got to go for real. Uh, it's, it's been a blast, man. You guys are, have been awesome on here, man. Seriously. It's been a really good live. We got to hang out, bullshit, and talk. And I got to drink my coffee. Or, well, I still got a bunch left. I'll take it with me on the road. I got to work tonight, my second job. Um, what's your favorite hot sauce, and how much do you like the carnivore pizza? I I really enjoy the keto version now. <laughs> now that I'm past day 90 and I went to the keto version, I make that very clean uh, t- um, sauce. So it's just diced tomato, garlic, um, a little bit of melted uh, or pancetta. Uh, you take some pancetta. And fry it up in the pan. Let the fat render a little bit. Don't make it crispy. Put that in the food processor along with the diced tomatoes and garlic uh, and some salt. Blend that up real fine. Like blend it up, and it makes an amazing pizza sauce. Very clean. If you if you can do tomatoes, um, and I tend to get like uh, just some regular diced tomatoes that are you know don't seem to have a lot of sugar and you know, it's not too bad. So, and, and you're not putting like a ton on there. You just, you know, you just put a layer of pizza sauce on there and then you decorate it like a regular pizza. But as far as like the carnivore pizza version. Yeah. I mean, uh, I love that too. It's, it's just a good treat every once in a while. It's just a lot of cheese, a lot of cheese. So I, I, I used it in the beginning a lot. Like if you guys go back to my, you know, beginning videos, I was probably having a carnivore pizza at least what once, a week, sometimes almost two in a week. And I think a lot of that was to kind of compensate for some of the diarrhea. <laughs> so, you know, in that very beginning of those first few weeks, you get, you have a lot more diarrhea. Um, so the cardboard pizzas helped <laughs> for some of that as well. I'm chatty tonight for a change. Hey, that's no problem. Um, but yeah, hot sauce wise, you know, I try not to stray. Like I love all kinds of hot sauces. I, before I got Seavit, okay, a few years ago, I was, of course, I was eating normal or said diet, right? But I could eat like hot stuff. I mean, I was doing like those hot challenges, you know, 2 million Scoville type shit and stuff. But then after Seavit, my, my palate was cleansed. Like I lost my taste buds for a month and everything reset. And even pepper table pepper was starting to kind of burn me. But now that I'm carnivore, I've worked myself back. The only thing I, the only hot sauces I pretty much will bounce back and forth between is either uh, Frank's like Frank's red hot or Tabasco, you know, um, as you guys saw in my one pound burger, I, I use Tabasco mostly for that, but Frank's red hot is what I'll use. I'll put a little bit on my plate and dip some of my burger more, mostly toward the back third of the burger once i get to the back third of the burger um usually is when i start kind of finishing off with a little bit of hot sauce not a lot not a lot but uh anyways i make homemade vinegar hot sauce yeah i'm i'm looking into there's a couple different types of peppers i'm looking into and i'm probably going to make my own as well i've been considering that yeah frank's red hot original exactly i love that scott like it's just it's just a good all-around sauce, like Frank's Red Hot. It's just classic, right? I mean, it, it doesn't get much more simple than that um, unless you make it yourself. I am going to try to make it myself, though. Um, I'm going to try to get me some – Some. it's just around here in, in northeast Tennessee. You don't really – there's not a lot of markets around here that carry good chili peppers unless they're dried. And then so I may boil some. I, I, there's, there's a – I can't remember the name of the of – the, Pepper. I made a salsa out of it one time and it was amazing. And I might make it into a hot sauce. Um, but I get that shit on everything. <laughs> yeah. Tom. Tom, yes. Glad some of you guys are chiming in here. God, I hate to go, guys. You, know, you guys keep popping in here. It's like I hate to leave, but seriously, I have to leave for work, guys. So uh, it's been so much fun and we'll do this. We'll do another live in 30 days. <laughs> or if you guys want me to go live a little more often every once in a while, but maybe we can have these hangouts. Um, 
you know, maybe I can look at once a week or something. If you guys want to do like a hangout, uh, we can just hang out once a week like this and um, bullshit. Talk about carnivore recipes and life, whatever you guys want to talk about. I'm pretty open. I'm pretty open about anything. Uh, Mexican markets, not really. That's the problem. There's around here, there's an Asian market. Um, you know, there's, there's just not a lot of Mexican markets around here. That's the problem. Um, like I said, I've gone to some of the local produce type places. They'll have a lot of fresh produce, but not in the way of peppers, um, chili peppers and stuff. I really, Really want to find some. I'm going to continue looking, but it just hasn't been a huge priority. So, um, but yeah. Anyways, guys, I had so much fun. I appreciate you guys. And just to sum up everything, in case you're here kind of late, uh, as you guys, I, I tried to show in a little bit of my stats. So again, um, right here, you can see. Uh, 30 days ago, I was 276.9. Now I'm 268.1. And my neck went down a quarter inch. My chest went down an inch and a half. And my waist, which is the biggest part of me, went down two and a half inches. And my hips stayed the same because I have no ass. And my legs are, <laughs> I don't know, it just um, it just stayed the same. But as long as I'm losing that big gut of mine and losing two and a half inches around my big gut, uh, it makes me feel better. So I just want to keep losing right here at the waist measurement. That's what I want to keep keep um, right here, the waist, 55 inches. I want to keep losing that. Uh, but, yeah, I'm down to 268.1. Total since November 27th, 2023, I've lost 47 pounds in four months. And I'm losing on average three pounds a week or 2.9 pounds exactly a week. So there you go. All right, guys. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much for the love. Again, I couldn't do this without you guys. I'm, I'm serious. You guys have kept me, kept me going. I love you guys so much. Over 800 subs now. It's amazing. So again, thank you all so, so much. And I appreciate it. And I, can, and I want to keep hearing from you guys. You guys are like my little family now, seriously. So I want to hear from you guys. I care about you guys. Let me know how your progress is going. Let me know any, any, you know, speed bumps in the road or let me know any milestones. All right. But guys love you. I will see you guys later. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.